It's election time in South Korea. South Koreans are voting in parliamentary elections and the polls will choose who will sit in the country's 300-member parliament. These elections are a major political test for Conservative President Yoon suk yeol Right, Shivin. Especially, Yoon suk yeols popularity has suffered amid a cost of living crisis and also a spate of political scandals in South Korea. Now, in a record turnout, more than 30 percent of eligible voters have already cast their ballots in two days of early voting last week. Now, the remaining voters can cast their ballot with the polling station set to close at 6 o'clock local time in the evening. Currently, the opposition Democratic Party of South Korea holds 142 out of the 297 seats, while the President's People Power Party has 101 seats to its name. The hotly contested election is largely seen as a referendum on the president, on the current president, of course, Yoon suk yeol Now, the South Korean president is about to enter the third year of his five-year presidential term. His approval ratings remain low amid an acrimonious doctor's strike, rising food prices and allegations of corruption, which could spell trouble for his People Power Party. The polls are separate from Yoon's presidential term. But the results of these elections may have a bearing on the future of his presidency. As the party, which has an absolute majority in the National Assembly, has the power to call for a referendum on the country's president. So, if the opposition wins 200 seats or more, Yoon faces the risk of impeachment. Pouncing on the president's approval rating, uh, the opposition, Democratic Party, which already dominates the 300-member legislature, hammered Yoon and his conservative People Power Party for mismanaging the economy and failing to rein in inflation. Now, moreover, in recent weeks, green onions have gone from a simple staple of Korean cooking to a powerful symbol of water anger after rising prices in Asia's fourth biggest economy. First, I think we need to vote for a candidate who understands realistic problems and suggests policies that immediately deals with them for people's livelihoods. In order to do so, it is important to know about the candidate rather than the party first. Of course, it is important to consider the candidate's party too, but only voting based on a party does nothing but divide people. And to move on this, we're now being joined by VOA correspondent Bill Gallo from Seoul. Hi, Bill. Welcome to World DNA. Thanks for having me. Right, Bill. Now, there are a number of key issues that dominates the polls today in South Korea, from the price tag of green onions, uh, which is a staple of Korean cooking, to the prolonged walkout by trainee doctors. Talk to us as to how these issues are expected to play out in the elections today. Yeah, as you've mentioned several times in your report, sort of the big issue here is food prices, mm -hmm. and that has taken the form of the green onion, which you've also mentioned is sort of ubiquitous when it comes to Korean cooking. I mean, it's even in kimchi. So this is a very mm -hmm. important vegetable for Koreans. Uh, the reason why that's becoming an issue is mm -hmm. because the president, Yoon suk yeol was in a grocery store at a campaign event very recently. He looked down at a bag of green onions and he said, this looks like a reasonable price for green yeah. onions. Yes. Well, it was about 65 cents. The problem is usually green onions are about two or three dollars. So it just sort of uh, drove this narrative that perhaps the Korean president wasn't in touch with the struggles of everyday people. As you mentioned, there are other issues, including maybe most notably a doctor's strike, which has resulted in many overcrowded hospitals. This has gone on for very many weeks. Yes. We don't know how long it's going to last, but it's sort of yet to be seen what role this will play in the election here. Bill, also, uh, you know, share your thoughts on this. Now, the current election is also being seen as a referendum for Yoon So Kyol. Talk to us about the divide which is there at the moment. Do you see it the same way? Yes, I mean, in some sense, these legislative elections are always sort of a referendum on the South Korean president, which has a single five-year term. However, it's sort of unclear to me that, uh, you know, this is fully that, right? I mean, uh, many South Koreans fall along conservative or liberal lines. Every election, they're going to vote that way. Every election, mm -hmm. what really matters is sort of those people in the middle, the 30 or 40 percent, which is quite large, of yes. South Koreans who will actually vote either way. That is the vote that's crucial to watch here, and it will sort of determine the outcome of this election. 
Right, Bill. Uh, Yoon So Kyul is is also grappling with a low approval rating and an opposition-controlled parliament that has limited his uh, major policy reforms. Um, talk to us as to how difficult uh, will things get for Yoon So Kyul from here onwards. What you see a lot of in foreign media reporting and local media reporting is the, the idea that perhaps Yoon could become a lame duck president mm. for the last three years of his presidency if his party loses this election. That's a bit misleading because in, in a very real sense, he's a lame duck president already. As you mentioned, uh, his approval ratings have been very low throughout the two years of his presidency. If his party cannot retake uh, the National Assembly in this election, mm. well, then it'll be the same situation he has now, which is to say it's very hard to pass, especially any domestic priority, any domestic legislation. What you may continue to see, however, it's Yoon suk Yeol continue to prioritize foreign policy. In this area, he has a lot of power. The South Korean presidency is actually very powerful when it comes to foreign policy. So perhaps his domestic agenda will be thwarted. His foreign policy will maybe even continue even more vigorously in the direction it's headed now. All right. That was our Voice of America correspondent, Bill Gallo, joining us from Seoul. Thank you so much for joining in, Bill. Yes, sir.